When people see Bunbury, what do they see? This film will scratch the surface on a deeper, much older history. A history of a sophisticated culture deeply entrenched in its natural environment. This is a Noongar perspective on Bunbury. Its first story is about totems. Well, some of them, some of them from down here has, their totem is, is the frog. Our totem is the frog. Our totem is the frog, mm. we don't then. Mm. When we was kids, we weren't allowed to pick up them frogs and play with them or nothing. You know, mm. They had to give us a hide and then Dad showed us one night. <coughs> He had an old mm. camp up and he got a big bullfrog and he put him in there. He said, I'll show you. In the morning, that thing wasn't there and we said, no, you take it out. No, he'd be gone. If a, a large frog suddenly appears in their doorway, especially the old people, their tent, for instance, down would go the tent, rolled up and they're gone. It's uh, not allowed to stay around where the, where the frog is, you see. He's come with some news and they've got a ship. Get out of the way. He's their totem. And it, it's a sign of um, when we have death in our family, that frog like us crying. We know all about the kangaroo. I can walk in the bush today, I can go out there and I can more or less walk straight to where he's hiding or sitting in the bush. I know, I know. it's my totem. The second story is about significant sites in Bunbury. This uh, basalt column here, this sort of uh, volcanic lava rock formation, um, it comes out uh, the other side of Augusta. So it would have had that sort of significance. And, and, and back when my people were using it, my ancestors were using it as a stone tool site, the ocean that we can see here now was another 40 mile out further near the continental shelf. So it wasn't a place where people come and went fishing. The ocean was a fair way away. That's changed dramatically and uh, <coughs> because of uh, waterways have been changed themselves, you know, with the progress. Mm. Building progress and that water's been changed. Like this Crescent River used to be, it never used to go where it used to. It used to come, in, come into the old Lashenault house and uh, old people used to crab and fish there, but now there's an old house there and the, the river's diverted back back the other way, they've straightened corners on it and it's a man-made river now. The Bunbury trotting track used to be a campsite of Aboriginal people in the, in the years, early mm. years, and the lights going in on the Picton Road there, Picton Road and where the, the, the big highway comes across, that big building near the river there, you know that big house? Mm. There used to be a big Nyongai camp there, because along the river Nyongai used to camp all the way along that river. And up over here with the uh, golf courses, the century, on the side of that hill, that used to be a big camping area for young us too. And there's a lot of significant sites here in Bunbury that we've uh, experienced. Well, if you look down the end of the bay, um, it's, it's my mother's country. Our people buried in these hills here, up on the Ocean Drive, there's burial sites all the way along that hill, that sand hill. This story has an education slant to it. Our kids that are in the system now is going to be the next wave of kids we've got that's going to manage what's left. The, the, the problem or the motivation for my generation is that we've got to put in place the building blocks of giving them something so they can go and learn about that something to manage it and hang on to it so it means something to them. I'd like to see our kids uh, take roles on that involve language, mm. uh, maybe some authors, I love to see authors, mm. um, kids that want to do more research, um, rather than just like Anora said with uh, sports is always uh, the main thing that everyone thinks that our kids are good at. Mm. Well as what we're doing out at the Jitty Jitty school we're teaching the little ones to, to mix in and to uh, the white kids and the Noongar kids are learning the same language. I ask them to define for themselves, to question for themselves why they were at school. Uh, were they there because the welfare said they had to be there and they get in trouble if they don't? Or were they there because they're considering about their future, about where their culture is, about where their life is? And If they weren't there for that, then maybe they shouldn't be there at all. 
the Bunbury is home to me now. It's been for a long time. I was brought down from the wheat belt to Bunbury when I was just six year old, which is 63 years ago. I think they've now it's it's gotten to where it's really cool to be in Nunga, to be mm. a Nunga kid in Bunbury. Our country calling. Long ago our people walked on this land. Today white people and Nunga people have come together and are walking together on this land. Today we've come from many lands and we share many dreams. We share the songs as we share the land.